Hi everyone, Captain Rob Thompson here. I figured I would have you guys go over doing a little electronics in the boat. I'm in the 16 foot skimmer skiff, the one I bought last winter, um, 2017 haul. Yeah, so I got this thing just as a bare bones haul and I put everything on it myself. I put the 40 Honda on it, the pulling platform, trolling motor, all that good stuff. So, what I'm doing now is I installed some LED lights in here, some basically like ground effects lights. I put some blue ones underneath inside the, uh, underneath the railings, and I put one underneath the polling platform. So I have three blue ones hooked in. Uh, if you ever try to install the lights yourself, just make sure that your positive goes to positive, your negative goes to negative. You can't wire them backwards and make them work like a normal, you know, normal DC light does, but these ones you have to have everything go positive, positive, to negative, to negative. So, have those in there. Uh, make sure you use whatever fusing they say to put in there, the right amount of wire you need to put in there to run your length. Um, remember DC too, if you have a light that is 10 feet away, you have to calculate your number as the travel there and the travel back. So. Just remember that too, if you go off the chart and it says, you know, how much gauge you have to use for how much length, you have to basically double your length because you're traveling there and back. So you've got that. Um, in this boat, there is no waterproof area. So I have a Pelican box that I have installed everything in and I've sealed the backside of it. So all the cables I have go in there are sealed into a panel inside this box, which keeps everything waterproof. Um, the biggest problem I had with this last year, and I didn't do it, but I'm going to have to with the redfish here in North Carolina, is on the bottom of this, I went to Harbor Freight and picked this up. It's a rubber mat, sticky on the back, and I'm going to actually cut this and mount it on the bottom of this box, so I'm a little bit more stealthy. You won't hear this box slide around or bang, because right now, It makes a lot of noise, so I gotta do that to get my stealthiness back. It didn't matter too much with the stripers up in New York, but it's definitely gonna make a big difference here. So I'm gonna have to change that out. Um, one of the other things I did to save myself some money, because I'm not gonna spend $150 of a spool of marine grade tinned wire, is I just use regular extension cord. And I've tucked it up underneath everything. So you have it all up high under here, all zip tied in place. All my connections are the waterproof type. If you can see that on there. These are the waterproof connections that you should have for every boat. You should have these, your bilge pumps, everything needs to be done with these. The problem is, you see a lot of guys do it and you can make money on this, is that when you use your crimping tool, you cannot use this style right here because you will break the insulation and then therefore when you shrink it it's going to open it up right there so use your crimping side where it's going to flat make it nice and flat it's not going to actually pierce it that way when you shrink it down it'll actually be sealed Alright, so you got the shrinking part down. Whenever you do your fusing, make sure waterproof fuses for everything or keep them inside the box. Other great thing to have, if you guys are into it, is using a power probe. You hook it directly to your battery. It lets you know on it what you have for voltage coming through. You can also apply voltage to it or you can put your ground to it. And you can go around and test all your circuits and everything and know right from here what you've got going on. These are great with bilge pumps. Um, you can find out whether it just has power not going to it. Or you can go on to it and actually give it power and then turn over the pump. So you know right then and there if your problem is someplace in the boat. 
getting to it, or you can give it a ground, go to the ground side, give it a ground, pump starts right up and goes, and you know your pump is fine again. It's all just a matter of just, you know, eliminating, you know, whether you have a, don't have a good power supply to it, or whether your ground is faulty, or whether your pump is just burnt out. So this is a great tool. It's about a hundred bucks, but it's definitely worth it if you're doing a lot of DC stuff all the time. Um, this one, I believe, also goes up to 24 volt. If you got a boat with 24 volt system, that'll it'll work on there too. Um, other thing I want to show you underneath here is I come across a lot of guys that boats don't have this, and I can't really see what I'm going to do in here. All right, you have your battery. Mine's hooked up right there. And what I do is I run everything to a battery switch in the back of the boat. And a lot of boats I work on don't have this feature. A lot of guys run everything right to the battery and they have a lot of issues with, you know, the battery just going dead on them a lot. So, um, everything of mine, I've always put a battery switch in there. Um, what you do with that is, is you just run a lead from your battery, positive lead from your battery, to the back of that switch. It'll say battery one or battery two. So you run your leads to that. And then you can run your grounds all directly to the battery or to a bus bar, then from the bus bar to your battery. So what that switch is doing is just eliminating your power running through everything all the time. Um, the only thing you should have bypassing that is your bilge pump. Your bilge pump should be live all the time regardless take it off that stupid switch on your dashboard for the auto power up there. You want to kill that whole panel. You just run your bilge automatically if it's a killer pump, which recycles every two minutes, or if you have the uh, type of the float in it, that should always be directly to your battery and fused right there. But uh, that battery switch is great. I uh, run my things off the back but that I can't get to. I have a big light up in the back that I use that I run the boat at night so I can see everything ahead of me that's directly off that switch so I can kill everything right there and then make sure my battery is shut down for the night when I'm done. So, but that's that's huge. You gotta have one of those in your boat and I work on a lot of stuff. I see that people just don't have it, especially you get into some of the older boats. The newer manufacturers all come with it, but uh, some of the older boats, your boats from the 70s, your 80s, into your 90s didn't come with them, so. If you don't have one, you should definitely install it. They start at like 40 bucks and work their way up to all sorts of craziness. But uh, that's pretty much it for that. I bought extension cord. I use extension cord throughout the whole boat for everything because I have my wires and I have my insulation over the top of it. So, which is protecting it. The only thing I have is I have three wires inside here. What I've selected to do was get rid of my green ground wire and I use the white and the black like I normally would use. The black for ground, which is old school, and then my white is my positive lead. And I've done that throughout the entire boat, so I know that white is power in, black is ground. And I've eliminated the green one from everything, so I can still go around. I use this throughout the entire boat for everything. The gauge is heavy enough to run everything I need to. I have nothing crazy in this boat other than just a couple of lights and uh, navigation, GPS, fish finder. That's pretty much it. Um, everything else that I have run up here, the trolling motor is on its own wiring. I think that that is either an 8 gauge or a 6 gauge, but it's run up front there and it's isolated from the back, so I have a charger built in up there. But I run this throughout the entire boat. You can see it bundled right here and labeled and everything is all kept nice and clean. I gotta put it all back up there once I finish putting in the uh, the ground effect lights. And that's it. So not a whole whole lot of craziness in here. I keep everything fairly simple. If you have any questions, um, I've worked on all kinds of boats that you can think of. So up to I don't know, 70, 70, 80 feet. So uh, give me a call, contact me. The uh, the information is always on here. Captain Rob Thompson at Gmail. Dot com and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.